Very good evening and thanks for clicking on to Bogan's Global Weather and Climate Report. It is edition 17. Uh, thanks for watching this evening. Um, as always, looking at the global temperature normally for today of Climate Reanalyzer. And you can see here that the global average temperature is 0 0.4 above normal northern hemisphere, a full 1 degree above the southern hemisphere, marginally below at 0 0.2. The Arctic... Um, plus 2.1 Celsius, zero exactly on um, on average for the Antarctic and the tropics, interestingly enough, is sitting bang on average as well. Uh, but uh, looking at the uh, September UAH satellite-based temperature for the global lower atmosphere, and uh, the month of September has come in at uh, plus 0 0.24 degrees above normal um so um uh, slight up up a slight notch as you can see here we're continuing to see this uh, this double dip scenario here especially um in the wake of the super el nino that went off back um in the middle 2010s and um you can see the dip and then the rise and then the secondary dip it looks as if we've got a little bit of an increase in temperature here according to this uh, during the the last few months here overall but i think the reason why is a lot of warmth stacked up uh, towards the, the far northern hemisphere uh, because it's interesting when you look at the, the, the tropical atmosphere is not really heating up uh, anywhere near as much as the the far north of the hemisphere of course global sea surface temperature normally is um, exceptionally warm compared to normal and of course, you would expect the temperatures um, within the landmass and atmosphere to reflect that abnormal warmth uh, coming and being released from both Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. So as it stands, certainly um, it's quite interesting reading because the, the month of September um, was was cooler than you know the previous few months during the summertime. And I've already explained my reasons why I think that has been the case. This is the month of October so far. And interestingly enough, it is a little bit of an opposite, especially northern uh, portions of Eurasia. We've got a bit of an opposite look to what we had back during the month of September. As you can see here, this is the month of September, cold and average across the top. But the first, um, the first well, 13 days of, uh, of October has shown uh, a warming within the high latitudes uh, of, of the Northern Hemisphere. And we've seen an increase in cooling, especially across Mongolia, China. We've continued to see almost all year long, west, northwestern India, Pakistan, parts of Iran, parts of the Middle East running below normal temperature-wise. Australia is well below normal. Notice here that uh, Southeast Asia, um, you know, Borneo, parts of Malaysia, Thailand, into Cambodia, Vietnam, um, average temperatures, if not below nor normal temperatures uh, during the month of, of October so far. And of course, we're only in the first half of the month. But I think increased rainfall in some parts of these areas is uh, keeping the temperature uh, subdued. Africa, interesting enough, still firmly below average across much of the continent very warm if you notice across the south western portions of canada um, and most of canada with the exception of quebec is running um, above normal here we've seen uh, pretty much summertime temperatures in recent days within the you know western portions of, of canada alberta british columbia even into saskatchewan manitoba seeing above normal temperatures here but very very warm notice here up towards the arctic region here and it's interesting when you see the correlation between what's going on within both stratospheric polar vortex and tropospheric polar vortex and that's another story for another day but it's interesting what's going on with the kind of warming the weakening the weakening of the zonal winds uh, and the fact that we're seeing a lot of buildup of warmth uh, way up to the north and that's essentially releasing a lot of the cold down into this the lower and mid latitudes of the of the northern hemisphere. But uh, 
what a difference we've seen around China, for example. We've seen a dramatic drop in temperature where parts of China was recording its its first time in, in recorded history of 40 Celsius during the month of October. And then we've seen a significant frontal system moving down and the temperature dropped like a stone. We're seeing some near record breaking cold in the very areas that seen a uh, record breaking heat just days before that. Now, um, I want to look actually at uh, what's going on uh, around the world w when it comes to, to the weather and temperature and rainfall and whatnot. A lot of things going on at the moment. And I want to look through my Twitter feed at uh, some of my retweets in recent days. Now, this was uh, snowfall in Christchurch New uh, in New Zealand. They recorded uh, for the first time in 53 years Rate, uh, snowfall during the month of October here, so that's very interesting, and uh, for sure. Um, you know, I go on to talk about the the pattern across the UK as well as across Europe and the Atlantic and the zonal nature of of the weather at the moment here. Of course, if you if you are on Twitter, you don't already follow me. Do check me out. I do post not only weather with regards to the UK and Ireland and Europe, but also uh, the global weather picture as well. This is an interesting one here. So Tokyo, after seeing record breaking heat in 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 many parts of Japan, in fact, uh, people uh, in Tokyo were shivering. I believe this was the seventh of October, in December, like cold, with a daytime temperature of only thirteen Celsius or fifty five Fahrenheit on Friday. Don't know whether that was the seventh, but it's a, a week ago today, making it the coldest. It, the coldest uh, October day in Tokyo in 88 years. So it's amazing sometimes when you see so much extreme heat, how nature can almost flick a switch and see the, the, the everything turning on its head. We're seeing that to a degree over the UK when it comes to rainfall, a barren past you know six, seven months. Uh, for the British Isles, we're now starting to see the rainfall increase. Uh, granted, southern portions of the British Isles, I've got several people, many people, uh, making comment about the lack of rainfall still across the south of England. I get that. But on the grand scheme of things, we're starting to see the turnaround taking place. It's going to be interesting to see how much rainfall we'll get during the second half of October, on into November, on into December, January and February. We'll wait and see. Heavy snowfall in Iceland here. Uh, remarkable snow depths for this time of the year. You can see this amazing uh, webcam image here uh, of heavy snowfall across parts of northern uh, Iceland at the moment here. Interesting tweet here by Severe Weather uh, Europe uh, talking about the linkage between October snow cover and the response to the stratospheric polar vortex here. Check that out if you haven't already done so. Uh, this was a, a, a scene uh, of Hurricane Julia roaring ashore in Nicaragua. Uh, you know, savage winds, uh, you know, over a foot of rain falling in only six hours. So incredible stuff, that's for sure, in Central America here. And it'll be interesting to see if there's any kind of linkage between late season tropical activity and early winter cold arriving for the British Isles here. Uh, again, something uh, that I would talk about in, in another time. But the, this is another webcam view of the massive snow depth already being reported in parts of of, uh, of Iceland here. Here's the rainfall. Interesting tweet by John Erdman talking about 406 millimetres of rain, over 16 inches of rain. Uh, so that's well over a foot, in fact, of rain falling in Liberia, Costa Rica, back on Sunday uh, in six hours. Some incredible stuff there. Uh, one of the latest 1.1 inches of snowfall in recorded history in Fairbanks, Alaska, as you can see here. And um, we are starting to see the snow increase across parts of Alaska and far northern Canada, despite the, the incredible warmth that we're seeing further south over Canada here. Uh, interesting tweet by, by our good friend uh, Richard Trott. Uh, talking about the fact that even with a, a westerly QBO, by the way, doesn't necessarily mean 
that we're not going to get winter cold. In fact, 2010, for example, was a West QBO uh, winter. Um, also, some analogs versus uh, forecast models showing uh, particularly early season uh, blocking up towards Greenland. Twin troughs, one over Eastern North America, one over Western Europe here. Again, that's another thing that I'm going to be continuing to look at. Heavy snowfall, Inner Mongolia. Uh, this is the big turnaround from the record heat that we've seen in recent times. Uh, blizzard conditions, snow depths in some places upwards of 12 centimetres of snow, as you can see here. Um, some parts of China seeing the largest snowfall uh, for the second half of October or the earliest. In fact, actually the early, early portion of October beyond and before the 15th of October, that's some of the, the heaviest snowfall. This is the Met Office forecast, by the way, for the November through January period here. It's showing a trough over the west of Europe, uh, blocking high pressure North Atlantic up in the Greenland here. And um, Julius here talking about his analog package uh, showing high latitude blocking over Greenland, over the Arctic region, deep trough over the UK and Ireland here. So a lot of rumblings at the moment with regards to early season winter cold. That is something in the upcoming week or certainly possibly the upcoming weekend. I'm going to be talking about the models and uh, more winter thoughts, so do stay tuned. This is an interesting tweet that I, I retweeted earlier this afternoon uh, by Andrew Miss Kelly, I think that is called, the guy is called, and look at this here. This is uh, the 30 HPA uh, vortex, the polar vortex over Antarctica, and is going gangbusters, as you can see here. Incredible stuff. It'll be interesting, actually, to see the temperatures over this region of the world here. Do we start to see the Antarctic temperature coming down? Very possible, given the strengthening of the polar vortex. And it's interesting, actually, the correlation between the Northern Hemisphere polar vortex versus the Southern Hemisphere polar vortex. And quite often, when one is weak, one is strong, one's strong, one's uh, you know weak. So interesting stuff, uh, actually. This is the current snow cover, by the way, over the Northern Hemisphere as of yesterday. So we're increasing the snow now. Alaska, far northern Canada, as you can see here. And, of course, central uh, central Russia, eastwards towards the uh, Pacific Ocean. We're now starting to see snow uh, increasing here. I think that may, in fact, be the Koreas. And we're starting to see snow north and south Korea uh, starting to develop here. So, um, yeah, lots of things going on. I do appreciate you watching. And please, of course, like, share and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'll be back again hopefully tomorrow with more. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday evening. Bye for now.